So you are a 3D artist at Disney Animation Studios in the mid 2000s and you want to reduce the time it takes to create characters, 3D assets and environments. So what do you do? You start thinking for a moment and realize that one of the most time consuming parts of the animation production pipeline is UV mapping. This is the most boring aspect of your work and the most time consuming because you painstakingly UV unwrap every part of Disney princesses and goofy characters. This includes UV mapping every and each individual body part, clothes, accessories, and so on. This, in addition to arranging and packing all of these small UV islands that are sometimes counted by the hundreds in a UV space. And you do this by following certain rules to make sure that the texturing artist who's gonna work on characters after you in the production pipeline is not gonna lose his mind because you didn't do your job properly. Now, the texturing artist is gonna work on different maps for texturing using a 2D painting software such as Photoshop. Remember, this is the mid-2000s and 3D animation is not as advanced as it is today. But after creating this genius texturing system of PTAX, you and your colleagues at Disney and Pixar Studios don't have to go through this painful, boring, and time-consuming process of UV mapping because you're going to directly paint on your 3D models in the 3D viewport. So how was this even possible and who actually pushed Disney to make this change? Back in the early 2000s, at the peak of 3D animation feature films, we were introduced to a new and relatively speaking high quality and realistic looking CGI. With the release of iconic movies such as Toy Story, Ice Age, Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, Up, Monsters and so on, and many more that helped shape the animation industry as we know it today. The thing is, Disney Animation Studios was so caught up in the technicalities so they created a new pipeline for 3D animation because art directors demanded a painterly look to the renders that can only be achieved by hand-painted textures, which is extremely time-consuming, so they opted to use procedural texturing that is often just a base color only to be pre-computed and stored into texture maps. In addition to caching various render attributes such as ambient occlusion in texture maps for rendering efficiency. And all of these steps required the models to be mappable. As technical artists found the previous texture mapping methods for subdivision surfaces to be inefficient, lacking and often requiring a painstaking manual setup that we are all familiar with, Walt Disney Animation Studios wanted an alternative solution for these traditional, tedious and time-consuming methods for texturing. An alternative that could produce film quality visuals that provide anisotropic filtering, no visible spatial or temporal aliasing, smooth filtering for displacement maps, and no visible seams. An alternative method that is also general in use, meaning adaptive to complex topology, efficient when it comes to cost and performance, and setup free. This means that models can be texture mapped without any preparation. And all of these objectives led to the creation of PTAX. But how does it actually work? To know how PTAX works, we first have to identify the problem that it solves. To put things into perspective, generally we have two different spaces. We have the geometrical space that our 3D models and objects are properly defined in, which we normally call a 3D space that is visible in the 3D viewport. And we have the texturing space that our 2D images belong to. For the sake of simplicity, we're gonna call it a 2D space. Now, Texture methods such as traditional UV mapping and PTAX act as a bridge between both spaces, more like a spatial projection translator, one that takes the 2D image proportional coordinates and either does it best to translate them into 3D space on top of the 3D model or requires a tedious manual setup by cutting out the UV shells, laying them out, making seams, and properly stitching parts and orienting these parts so it follows the intended flow and look of the overall model. Doing so, you are quite often sacrificing visual quality on smaller parts of your model and focusing on bigger portions. And this is the traditional texturing method called UV mapping. PTAX, on the other hand, offers an easy solution to all the painstakingly and time-consuming manual setups with the click of a button. The secret is, it simply disregards and deletes all the existing UVs and stores separate textures to each polygonal face, meaning each face of the subdivision or polygon mesh has its own unique texture. PTAX file contain per face texture, also face and edge adjacency data along the geometry metadata. It can efficiently store 
hundreds of thousands of texture images in a single ptax file. And the neat thing about ptax is that it gives you total control over each small phase of your complex mesh resolution wise, unlike the traditional UV mapping. As I previously said, it sacrifices small parts of your object by occupying small space on the UV patches, meaning less resolution output for that particular part. And PTAX ignores that logic, as you can output the maximum quality out of any face or corner of your mesh, even if you zoom all the way in. So the textile density resolution can be multiplied at will. This makes PTAX best suited for film quality productions, whether it be quality, the general usage, or the efficiency. To understand PTAX further, we have to compare it to UV mapping. UV mapping is, without a doubt, the most hated, time-consuming, and tedious part of the 3D modeling and texturing process. It is the complicated and amazing mess behind realistic-looking textures on the characters and environments you see in movies and video games. And I know that I may sound like I'm holding a grudge against it, but wait until you cut and unwrap a high poly sculpted model that you bring to your 3D software. Also, highly detailed 3D characters, weapons, vehicles, and so on, but it requires a lot of tedious work to put all these things together. That's why you need a tool like UV Pack Master to avoid all these problems and headaches. So let me take a moment and tell you about UV Pack Master 3. It is a GPU accelerated script for both Blender that is one of the best tools in the market, which helps you to create, pack, and manage UVs faster and easier than ever before. The secret of UV Pack Master 3 is that it offers a powerful engine that is capable of utilizing both GPU and CPU at the same time, providing a really efficient and significantly faster packing process compared to the other packers available out there. It is also jam-packed with a long list of tools and features, such as advanced UV aligning tools, stacking tools, the ability to prioritize UV islands during packing, advanced UV grouping, textile density tools, and even the option to pack non-square textures, in addition to other stuff. The add-on also allows advanced users to utilize it in more advanced capabilities to perform custom operations through Python code. Also, amongst the many features, there is a recently added one that I personally find very useful, which is the ability to orient UVs to the 3D space, which automatically orients UVs in such a way that the 3D texture direction in the 3D space becomes consistent. So if you are a game developer, interior designer, game assets, or character artist, UV Pack Master is gonna help you tremendously to save time and avoid headaches. And if you are interested, you will find the necessary links in the description. Now, one of the reasons why UV mapping is still the main method of getting stuff done is because it is the most optimal and resource efficient specifically for game engines such as Unreal Engine and Unity Engine because UV optimization is an advanced level of real-time processing. And this plays a huge role, especially in how the light maps the game engine generates interact with the lighting systems depending on the relative size of your models in your scene, meaning high resolution light maps equals less FPS. And these light maps define how well the model or the object deals with both direct and indirect light sources and how well and precise the shadows are casted. Simply said, it is important how the UVs are unwrapped and also mapped because it determines the resolution of the final resolved light map. On the other hand, PTAX shines in the film industry only, as it allows for absolute freedom and control over your projections with outstanding resolution and quality on the entire model in an extremely short period of time, because it simply doesn't need any UV assignments or any UVs at all and this falls apart in the video game industry due to optimization issues. This in addition to the fact that PTAX allows to create infinite quality and complete control over one specific model at a time, meaning whatever textures you are making using PTAX, they are only able to be used on that specific model with the same exact number of faces, simply because it paints on each face a unique texture and this eliminates the modularity aspect of video game level creation which is a problem. In short, the biggest difference between UV mapping and PTAX is simply their use case. 
if it is a pre-rendered situation such as creating films and animations, PTAX is the way to go if you want to. And if it is a real-time rendering case such as video games, then UV mapping is a must. But keep in mind that many VFX and animation studios still use UV mapping which takes us to the next point. Now, we need to ask a more important question which is why PTAX is not industry standard and why you never heard of it if you are new to 3D. In 2008, Bolt was the first feature film to use PTAX. A year after its release, Pixar Studios integrated PTAX into their render engine called RenderMan. It is in 2010 that PTAX had a major turn of events as it was released to the public as a free open source technology. After that, it slowly spread into various studio pipelines and various 3D packages, which led to a quick integration into many big 3D software such as Houdini, 3D Code, Mudbox, and Mari, and branched out through V-Ray onto other software such as Maya. So, PTAX has never been industry standard and it is not till this day. Simply because it is limited in the VFX industry pipelines that require high quality visuals in a short period of time. And this isn't the case for the video game industry as I previously explained. Not this alone, but also because UV mapping has become much easier and faster than ever before, especially if you use the right third party tools such as UV Pack Master that we talked about today. Also, PTAX comes with its own set of problems and challenges that UV mapping does not have, which prevented some studios and artists from using it just to avoid complicated stuff. And from what I can see, the final nail in the coffin, and this is just speculation because I might be wrong, I believe the rise of software such as Substance Painter that took over the animation, film industry, VFX industry, and most importantly, the game development industry, played a huge role in burying PTAX because it eliminates the need for the texture painting part that PTAX promises, since Substance can do painting extremely well, maybe even better than Disney's PTAX. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also take a look at some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.